last thing I want to do right now is to film, but I'm just trying to document for awareness of cyclic vomiting syndrome. I've thrown out more times than I can count tonight, and I have a horrible migraine. And I just went back to bed and tried to lay down, but I couldn't because the nausea is too bad. And I'm going to put a trick warning right now. I'm going to show you how I got sick in my trash can. Not pretty sick. And I honestly probably threw up the two Toradol I took for my migraine, so just what I need. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. <laughs> oh. She always knows when I'm having an extra hard time. Talk to you again. It's like like five in the morning right now. I've been up all night sick. by my bed and unfortunately if you don't clean it up right away it's just a permanent stain so tonight is the second night in a row that I've spent the whole night throwing up I haven't been able to sleep at all and it's probably like almost two lost track of how many times I threw up and I need to be wearing my oxygen but when I'm puking that much it just gets caught in my cannula and then it's hard to breathe because when you're throwing up a lot you can't like you, you have to hold your breath when you're throwing up so it's just really hard I'm so exhausted I'm, just, I'm too nauseous to lay down, so I've just been stuck in the bathroom for like two hours. I can't even hold water down. I'll take one sip and it doesn't come right up within like a minute. Thankfully, I saw puking eventually around 3, 3.30. And I was able to lay down and then eventually fall asleep. By the way, I have this band-aid on my oxygen so that it doesn't come out when I sleep. Um, when I do have to wear it at night, 
it tends to come out, so I just put a band-aid. I do take a lot of different antiemetics, which are anti-nausea meds. Um, I take Ondazotron, which is Zofran. I take, and then it's dissolvable under the tongue. Uh, I take Phenergan, I take Compazine, uh, I take Imatriptyline, which, which is prophylactic. Um, that's also for my um, nerve damage, but it's supposed to help the cyclic vomiting. Um, and then, of course, I'm on my IV fluids, which is considered a treatment for not just my POTS, but for the cyclic vomiting because it is it treats me. Otherwise, I would have to go to the hospital. Um, I used to have to go to the hospital all the time. I've been hospitalized more times than I can count for cyclic vomiting flare-ups. I was even put in the ICU July 2020 because I was throwing up nonstop, like literally nonstop, so bad for like week, two weeks straight. And I got so sick that my pots flared up so bad. My heart rate was like 200 beats per minute. My blood pressure was insanely low. They were super worried about hypo, um, hypovolemic shock. So I had to go to the ICU, it was really scary, but thankfully I was okay. But if I didn't have my IV fluids at home, my oxygen, all my meds, I would still have to go to the hospital every single time I have a flare up, which these days is like all the time. So yeah, I'm just super thankful for that. And also, I last night I had a low grade fever, it was like 99.1, so it wasn't bad. But that's why like I get really cold and then really hot during my vomiting episodes. Usually while I'm vomiting, I'm really hot, like burning up. And then after the episode is finished, I get freezing cold. That's just what it is, even when I don't have a low grade fever. So yeah, um, it's pretty late because I didn't get to bed till late. So that's the normal. I usually am flared up even more at night. I don't know why? Anyone else who has cyclic vomiting out there, please let me know in the comments if your cyclic vomiting syndrome is worse um, at night, if you throw up more at night. Because probably for years, I've been throwing up more at night. I throw up during the day too, but it always seems to get worse at night for some reason. I feel super weak. My POTS has flared up. My hypoglycemia has flared up. I woke up this morning shaking and I was really low. I was like 52 with my blood sugar. Um, I had some juice, which I think helped a little, but um, I might have to have something else. I'm still pretty nauseous. Excuse me. So I didn't quite make it to the toilet on time. I have been really nauseous, but it's been like two or three days since I've thrown up, so. I w I'd like didn't see it coming. It, <clears throat> it kind of just like came up out of nowhere. I, I was nauseous. I didn't know I was that nauseous. So I like ran to the toilet and I should have just used my trash can, but it was, it's like a new trash bag and I was trying to preserve it. And I didn't quite make it to the toilet. As you can see. So I'm gonna have to clean up. Zero energy. <clears throat> So yeah, one of the things I wanted to mention, I'm sure most people who have cyclic vomiting syndrome already know this, but if you don't, you might not know that a lot of us, at least when we're flared up, we have to be on a soft food or even a liquid diet because I'm sure anyone who's ever thrown up knows that if like whatever you eat, it's gonna come up and if you eat solid food, it's gonna be much harder to throw it up. It's gonna be longer, harder, you're gonna feel sicker. Sometimes it gets stuck in your throat. Um, it's not fun, it makes the whole, I mean, it's vomiting is never fun, but it makes it more not fun. So I've been doing mostly soft foods and liquids, thankfully, because that helps it come up much easier and quicker. Um, I do, however, this is why I haven't been wearing cannulas. This is the second one I've ruined this week with getting, I don't know if you guys can see that vomit in there. Um, I'll insert another picture of another one that I had ruined. And there's really no way to clean that. Like, it's really hard to get in there. Thankfully, my oxygen saturations haven't been too bad, but I have been really short of breath. I mean, it's like a constant struggle, so like, all the vomiting just makes it harder to keep that on. I'm always afraid that I'm gonna ruin like another one. I usually just take it off. Like if I really need it, I'll take it off. 
when I'm throwing up, but sometimes I can't. Sometimes I have to keep it on. But like any of my symptoms, my breathing, my vomiting, nausea, pain, it's all up and down like a roller coaster. I'm gonna get some rest because I am exhausted after that vomiting spell and after cleaning it up. Hey guys, so I am having yet another day this week where I'm having a, an attack, um, throwing up, horrible, horrible migraine. Um, it's a little better now that I took a couple Toradol. Um, but I just wanted to mention also for awareness, this is really gross, but when I'm in, a, in the middle of an attack or when an attack is right about to hit, I will produce too much saliva. So I'll have to carry a cup because I have to just keep spitting my excess saliva into this cup. I don't know if you can see, but you probably don't want to because it's really gross. This has been happening for maybe three hours now. Another symptom of cyclic vomiting syndrome is low grade fever. So thankfully today I don't have one, even though I feel like I do. But a lot of the times that I am having an attack, I will have a low-grade fever coinciding with it. So usually about 99 to 100. If it goes over 100, then I, I have a protocol that I have to go into the ER. But generally it doesn't. It usually stays between 99 and 100. So, And it really sucks because even though it's not a high fever, I have like the horrible shivering shakes, you know, cold shakes and cold sweats and hot flashes and um, all that way worse than my normal um, hot cold swings from POTS and dysautonomia. So yet another symptom of cyclic vomiting. There are many symptoms that people wouldn't necessarily associate with cyclic vomiting that are symptoms of cyclic vomiting syndrome. So yeah, if you didn't know that, now you know. So you guys, I have been walking around my apartment with a sick bag i could just throw up at any moment especially when i like walk or like move it makes me more nauseated so <sighs> yeah fun stuff time to get some more sleep so i've thrown up a ton of times today and i'm at the point where i'm throwing up bile because there's nothing in my stomach to throw up and that can be harder because i just rat i just like keep dry heaving and which is really painful when there's nothing to throw up but the body is like you know running the motions of throwing up there's nothing actually there i'm gonna call my palliative nurse actually i tried calling and i didn't get an answer of course i have my iv fluids which i've been running continuously i wanted to show you guys i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but because i throw up so much i have these the veins near my mouth are like ruptured or something you could see them just because I like from throwing up so much and I don't know if you could see but they're definitely inflamed see right there that is from throwing up a whole bunch like I didn't used to have this but also that's probably because I have vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome the combination of that with the sick like vomiting I think is messing with my um, artery, not arteries or veins, but capillaries or um, I can't think of the other word right now. I am so exhausted, y'all. I need to lay down and try to take a nap. I'm gonna get extremely weak. Um, just holding the phone is really hard, so I'm gonna take a nap and hopefully I will be less nauseous. Um, I don't even know if I'm, I'm gonna be able to lay down. So I am finally having a day that I am not puking my guts out, I'm not throwing up bile, still very nauseated, um, but not so nauseated that I can't lay down. So I'm, I've been trying to catch up on sleep and now that my body is like able to sleep more, I am so exhausted, like it's, it's finally catching up to me, like I mean I've been exhausted, but I feel like I've been up for like a month without sleep or food. <laughs> My nurse finally called me back and she we talked about what the next step is going to be and so first of all she ordered some blood work to check on I guess like to see how my nutrition and you know all that is doing and she said if it shows that I'm like malnourished or dehydrated or if my potassium is low and like all those things then I will need um, banana bags 
Banana bags are electrolytes, which are mixed in um, an IV bag with like vitamins and like I think it's a lot of like B vitamins and potassium, I believe, like stuff like that. Um, and you just mix it in with your infusion and just run it like you do a normal IV. So that is supposed to help hydrate you and like kind of replenish you when you're really depleted like I am from not being able to properly nourish or keep food or even liquids down some days. So thank God for my IV fluids, otherwise I would be already admitted to the hospital. Um, she did tell me if this keeps going on for another couple of days that I probably should go. That I might need TPN or even a feeding tube. Hopefully I don't need that, but if this keeps going, I just need some way to get nutrition in because um, it's really affecting so much. I don't have the energy for anything. I can't even hold the phone now anymore. I had to put it down on my stand. So, but yeah, um, she did say the other option would be TPN that um, I, I would have to talk to the dietitian there and the doctors and um, the attending GI. I currently do not have a GI because I do not, so I have, um, Aetna Better Health through Medicaid and Aetna Better Health honestly the coverage is so poor the coverage is so poor I do not have there is no gynecologist except for one that it took me literally like three years to find finally found him after they found out I had three sits like where was he hiding I don't know but I have no gastroenterologist in Northern Virginia whatsoever. I would have to travel five hours, which is with my body is just not possible. And that's one way. So that's the nearest gastroenterologist that's covered in my network. There's other specialists that I don't have covered either. So pulmonologist, for example, my immunologist that have, has been treating my muscle activation, asthma, all of that. So. I really need better coverage. I'm getting to the point where my health is declining even more. And especially with my GI issues, my cyclic vomiting, so flared up for so long. I mean, it's been flared up since June. That's like five months. It's been like two weeks now that I have been throwing up almost every day and multiple times and not able to hold flu fluid down and throwing up bile. And it's just really affecting every, all my symptoms are getting worse. TPN. Hopefully it will be temporary, seeing the tube feeding. Um, for those that don't know, TPN stands for Total Parent Parenteral Nutrition. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's pronounced Total Parenteral Nutrition. But it's basically nutrition through your central line. So it would go in through my line here. It's like liquid nutrition, basically. And it would give me all the nutrients and fat and like calories that I need to sustain myself. So... Um, again, hopefully it doesn't get to that point, but like, I probably, if I start throwing up again, like I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm past my limit. I'm going to go to the ER. I try to avoid the ER at all costs. If you know me, you know that like, I try not to go unless I feel like it's life or death or it's just truly unmanageable at home. If I can manage it at home with my palliative care, with my doctors, home health, all of that, you know, then I will. I talked to somebody at my insurance and they said the open enrollment date is, starts November 1st. It goes from November 1st through the 31st of December. So I feel like I keep blabbing on, but basically long story short, I'm gonna try to switch my plans next month when the open enrollment is here and I will hopefully have better coverage finally and have a GI who will finally start to be able to treat me um, because even though I have all these diagnoses from other times I've been admitted from flare-ups, you know, and all the tests they ran in patient, I still haven't got proper treatment. Like all I've been given is antiemetics and IV fluids, you know, and hopefully the banana bags will help, but that's not like nutrition. It's just like vitamins that will just help my body to like keep going. I've basically been living off of Koya protein and Evolve protein shakes. They're vegan protein shakes with low sugar and high protein. Um, mind you, they do have like some fiber, which I was avoiding fiber for a while, but actually fiber has been helping me to go to the bathroom. I've been horribly constipated, even with stool softeners. You know, it's been a big issue So uh, for months and that's been affecting my bloating and just making me feel worse. But 
I have upped the protein, I mean, the protein and the fiber, mainly the fiber, and that has helped me um, to go. So I've been having more regular BMs without, you know, loading myself with stool softeners. So, um, so that's a win. At least I'm able to, I was able to drink a whole one yesterday, and I've already drank half of one today. So that's, that's better than nothing. So hopefully this will be resolved soon and I can get on with trying to cope my best and focus on other things and trying to heal and get my life back as much as possible um, but yeah that's my update for now I'm probably gonna close the vlog here but if not I will you will see me again before I close the vlog and hopefully my oxygen isn't too loud usually when I'm in the bathroom the oxygen is like you hear it more because I'm in a smaller space. So I'm really short of breath and I'm really weak from weeks of throwing up, but I'm going to try my best to speak as loud as I can so that you could hear me over my oxygen. The things I wanted to say about cyclic vomiting syndrome before I wrap up the vlog is that first of all, no two people's symptoms are alike. So me and another person with cyclic vomiting syndrome are not going to have the exact same sy symptoms everybody is different even people with the same illness another thing i wanted to point out is that flare symptoms are not the same as like normal symptoms when you're not on a flare so for me when i'm flared up it's obviously a lot of throwing up whether that's throwing up bile or throwing up anything i eat throwing up liquid extreme nausea extreme bloating a lot of burping low-grade fevers reproduction of saliva are my biggest symptoms when i'm in a flare when I'm not in a flare, my biggest symptoms are nausea, and sometimes it can get really bad that I wish that I could throw up to release it. Both ends of the spectrum are bad. Throwing up and being so nauseous that you wish you could throw up, both are bad. But when I'm not flared up, I usually don't throw up. So I just get really nauseous and really bloated, um, and then the burping and low-grade fevers. Now, I don't have low-grade fevers as often when I'm not flared up, but I still get them from time to time. When I'm flared up, these symptoms are just like constant. Every day, every night, I don't get a break. I thought that was really important to mention about cyclic vomiting syndrome, the difference between flare symptoms and not flare symptoms. I wanted to point out that I really did not want to make this video. It's very, it's the raw reality of what cyclic vomiting syndrome looks like. So it's not pretty, it's not glamorous by any means. This is not something that I'm really proud to show. I always try to show my best foot forward, my best face, you know, try to smile and be positive and show the good aspects of my life while still showing you the truths of my illnesses. However, I needed to show you all the graphic details so that you could really see what a flare is like with cyclic vomiting syndrome. That's basically all I wanted to say. Awareness is super important because without awareness, we won't have understanding. And without awareness, we won't be able to get a cure because we won't have funding for research and the treatment options that are available now are simply not enough. Cyclic vomiting treatment options are really limited to anti-emetics, which are anti-nausea medicines, most of which don't even work when you have moderate to severe cyclic vomiting. And also prophylactic like imatripsaline, which doesn't really help if I'm being honest, and then IV fluids, which is more a treatment for dehydration, which is a result of the cyclic vomiting syndrome. So basically, of course there's feeding tubes and you know TPN for the severe cases, but that's pretty much it. And that is just to get nutrition in. It doesn't even help with the cyclic vomiting symptoms. It just helps you to maintain a healthy weight and to get the nutrition that you need. So. The treatment options for cyclic vomiting are very limited at this current time and that's why research and awareness is so key. It is so key y'all. So please, if you have cyclic vomiting syndrome, spread the word, share this video. People need to know what it is. A lot of people don't even know what it is. I didn't even know what it was until I was hospitalized in 2019 and I was diagnosed. And that's when I was like, whoa, I've had these symptoms since I was a little kid. I've had cyclic vomiting symptoms since I was eight. I remember going on field trips and getting so sick, you know, I was always getting called home from school, I mean like they always had to call my parents because I was too sick to be in class, always running back to the nurse's station, I was just always sick and cyclic vomiting syndrome has a lot of triggers, there's foods, there's so many foods that trigger my cyclic vomiting syndrome, chocolates, coffee, 
almonds if I have too many almonds, potatoes if I have too many potatoes, bananas, you know, too much processed foods, there's so many things and stress, emotions, that can be a, a trigger for cyclic vomiting, which is really hard to avoid sometimes. Especially when you're fighting multiple chronic illnesses, it's really hard to avoid stress. I mean, everyone has stress, right? That's just like a daily part of life. So honestly, it just makes cyclic vomiting worse because it's kind of like being allergic to your own emotions. And I think mast cell activation syndrome plays a part in this and making it worse because I did notice, or I have noticed, in the last two years since I've been paying more attention to triggers that emotions or stress is a big trigger for me and that can be really hard to avoid like I said so I do breathing techniques meditation yoga when I can and for me yoga is very gentle light stretching because I have a spinal cord injury which complicates things more but anyway bottom line cyclic vomiting syndrome is very very hard to live with it needs a cure, it needs better treatment options, and it needs more awareness. It's an extremely harrowing disease to live with, and it's technically not a disease because it's not pathological, they don't really know what causes it, but it is a horrible illness. And for me, I personally believe that my mast cell activation causes my cyclic vomiting, but that's just a feeling I have. There's nothing that can confirm that as of now, so. But yeah, I'm so grateful if you made it up to this point. It means so much to me because, like I said, awareness is key in getting better options for treatment and also for a cure, hopefully, right? That's like the ultimate goal and hope for us all is that there will be a cure one day. And as hard as this illness is, it's so unimaginably hard some days. I don't know how I find this strength. I honestly give a huge shout out to everyone out there who is fighting cyclic vomiting syndrome. You guys are all warriors and we are in this together. We will make it through. Just keep pushing forward and we got this. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you to understand cyclic vomiting syndrome more and to understand how illnesses like mast cell activation can lead to so much more than just allergy symptoms. So, and cyclic vomiting syndrome too is not just nausea and vomiting, it's a lot more than that as you saw in the video. So yeah, that's it for today. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. And if you haven't already, subscribe to see me on my chronic illness journey and to see videos about vegan and gluten-free food. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.